For today's Mental Health Monday, we are talking about a very difficult but very important topic. Later this week is Colorado Suicide Prevention Day. It's important to know the risk, warning signs, and how, the, how to talk to kids about it. So joining us this morning is our health expert, uh, Dr. Pell Coley. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. So talk to us about how common teen suicide is in Colorado. Actually, Colorado is the sixth worst state out there for teen suicide. And the rate in Colorado is actually double the national average. We don't know exactly why that is, mm -hmm. but we think it has a, a number of different factors and influences, including things like social isolation and more substance abuse in Colorado and, and factors like that that can affect the rates. Seems like we've been hearing a lot about it. That's yeah. for sure lately. Those are shocking numbers yeah. too. So yeah. what should what should uh, people, friends, parents look out for? So I think the most important thing is to know the risk factors for suicide. Mm -hmm. So there's certain genetic risk factors. So if you've had a family history of suicide, then your risk for suicide is a little bit higher. There's also personality specific risk factors to your teen. So if you have a perfectionistic teen, they're certainly more likely to be higher risk. Similarly, a teen that's socially isolated or prone to bullying or low self-confidence. And then finally, environmental risk factors. So if you have any disruptions at home, like divorce or parents fighting, mm -hmm. or disruptions at school, like not doing well in school or, you know, being subject to bullying, all of those can contribute to risk. Keep so as, mm -hmm. as soon as you recognize those risk factors, then you can really sort of start to have that conversation with your teen about, mm -hmm. you know, suicide and, and the implications of it. It's such a difficult topic to bring up, let alone with your teenager. So what's your advice on approaching that? Yes, and so a lot of people think that bringing up the topic will actually plant the idea in your teen's head, and that's actually not true. What it does do is it opens the doors for communication. So psychologists have recommended a few different strategies. Mm -hmm. The first is called depersonalization. So you talk about suicide as an academic topic. So you talk about the risks and mm -hmm. the treatments and you know just the illness itself as if it's it's in the third person. The second is called displacement. So you talk about it in respect to somebody else, usually a celebrity. So you pick Robin Williams or Kate Spade or somebody mm -hmm. else who's committed suicide and then see how your teen reacts to that specific situation, see what questions they have. And then the third strategy is to, if you're not comfortable talking about suicide directly, is to just kind of insert yourself into your teen's life and build a bridge of trust so that you can really get them to open up to you and, and share things with you. Yeah. And then, you know, uh, depending on what happens, there are a ton of resources available. I do know that. That's absolutely right, Gary. So the resources 9healthfair.org is a great place to start if you don't know where to start. But there's also a 24-7 national hotline that you can call at any time. And then your primary care doctor's office is really important. So, so if at any point you're not sure what to do, reach out to those resources because this is a real epidemic here in Colorado and we have to do something. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Dr. Pyle Coley, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Thank well, you.